Divorced, beheaded, died. Divorced, beheaded, survived. Chances are you've heard that nasty little rhyme about Henry VIII's matrimonial consumption before, but it serves to remind us that the story of Henry VIII's wives um, is an important part of the story of the Tudor dynasty. They deserve their place to tell their story. So, for the first time ever, Historic Royal Palaces has reunited 16th century portraits of all six of Henry VIII's wives together again in Henry VIII's own council chamber here at Hampton Court Palace. Henry VIII was married to his first wife, Catherine of Aragon, the Spanish princess, for over 20 years, and for most of that time they were a happy, well-matched couple. Catherine um, gave birth to six children, but only one of them survived, the Princess Mary, who would grow up to be Mary I. But Henry VIII needed a son, and eventually looked elsewhere. This is the woman who turned Henry VIII's head, Anne Boleyn, um, to whom Henry was married for three years. But these portraits of Catherine and Anne tell a different story. Catherine is more beautiful than Anne. This is a painting probably painted for a supporter of Catherine of Aragon during the long, drawn-out divorce proceedings with Henry VIII. She didn't go without a fight. It shows Catherine with her pet Marmoset, um, it also shows the Marmoset reaching for a crucifix around her neck and disregarding the coin that Catherine is offering him. This is a, st a statement, a message, a painting with a message. It says that Catherine's belief in the sanctity of her marriage to Henry was more important than the offer of any filthy reward that Henry offered her to go quietly. The portrait of Anne, on the other hand, may be that rare thing, a portrait of the Queen during the last years, the last days of her reign with Henry VIII, when she too was on the way out, having failed to provide Henry with a son, only another daughter, the little girl that would grow up to be Elizabeth I. But we don't actually know what Anne Boleyn looked like. All the portraits of her, including this one, may be late 16th century paintings, painted under the reign of her daughter Elizabeth I. In fact, the only image of Anne to survive unquestionably from her reign is this commemorative medal of 1534. Anne Boleyn and Henry VIII's relationship was destructive, tempestuous. Ultimately, Anne was accused by her enemies at court of an unbelievable litany of, of adultery, incest and witchcraft. She was executed at the Tower of London. This manuscript is a wonderful evocation of the factional infighting and backstabbing at Henry VIII's court. It was a manuscript compiled for Anne, possibly by the court musician Mark Smeaton. It is full of little illumination showing Catherine of Aragon's badge, the pomegranate, being pecked at by the badge of Anne Boleyn, the falcon. Yet the manuscript is unfinished, as Mark Smeaton was one of those who was accused and found guilty of committing adultery with Anne. He too was executed. After he dispensed with Anne, Henry VIII married four more times. Henry VIII's third wife, Jane Seymour, was the one that gave him a son the boy that would grow up to be Edward VI. She died in childbirth a few days later. Her stellar achievement in giving Henry what he most wanted rose her above all other of Henry VIII's wives. It was her portrait that survived on palace walls long after she was gone. This little document is a Tudor press release celebrating the birth of Edward here at Hampton Court on 12th of October, 1537. This document, on the other hand, is the marriage annulment of Anne of Cleves, Henry's fourth wife, to whom he was only married for six months. Henry came to believe that Anne of Cleves was pre-contracted to marry somebody else, the son and heir of the Duke of Lorraine. The marriage ended in disaster. But Anne wasn't ugly. This myth of Anne of Henry being deceived by a, an overflattering portrait was one made up later by historians. This portrait um, records what Anne really looked like. This is what a portrait was meant to do, record the likeness of somebody who wasn't there. It's possibly a portrait that Henry may have seen before he married Anne. Anne of Cleves survived. She actually outlived all of Henry VIII's wives. She retired into comfortable obscurity to be known confusingly as the king's sister. Catherine Howard, Henry VIII's fifth wife, was the last fling of a middle-aged man desperately trying to hold on to his youth. We don't know how old Catherine was. At the oldest, she was 21. Henry VIII was 49. He was besotted. She was out of her depth. Catherine had a past, and she spent the two years of their marriage trying to resist temptation from old boyfriends and new suitors. She may not have succeeded. This is the only letter to survive in Catherine's handwriting, written to Thomas Culpepper, an ambitious young courtier who charmed his way into the Queen's bedchamber. It is signed endearingly, yours as ever life endures. 
But Henry VIII found out and wept uncontrollably and then lashed out in anger. Catherine Howard was executed as was Thomas Culpepper. So successfully, in fact, was Catherine excised from history that we don't know actually what she looked like either, just like Anne Boleyn, her cousin. This portrait, which is widely argued to be her, may not be her at all. It is unidentified, just like a lot of Tudor portraits. We may never know. After Catherine Howard, Henry VIII had the time and energy to marry only once more. Catherine Parr was twice widowed, although still young, clever but astute. She had many of the qualities of all of Henry VIII's previous wives put together. She was also um, a patron of the arts and a believer in Protestant reform. Catherine became the first queen of England to publish a book in her own name. This is her collected Prayers and Meditations of 1545. Catherine outlived Henry VIII and married the love of her life, her fourth husband, Thomas Seymour, only to die in childbirth the following year. This is a lock of hair cut from her corpse, from her grave, which you can still visit today at Sudley Castle. Despite all of Catherine's efforts, Henry VIII died a religious conservative, a Catholic. This is Henry's rosary, intricately carved with scenes from the Bible and with royal iconography. It is enormous, 60 centimetres long, appropriate for the huge, bloated man that Henry VIII became at his death in 1547. And just like his corpse when he died, Henry's legacy was equally poisoned. Edward VI, who succeeded him, was a Protestant zealot, but he lived only six more years. He was succeeded by his half-sister Mary I, whose portrait is also here. She returned the country to Catholicism. Mary was succeeded by her half-sister Elizabeth I, who returned the country to the Church of England. This portrait is another statement about matrimonial intent. When Elizabeth succeeded to the throne, she was an unmarried 25-year-old princess. She was badgered by her privy councillors to name her husband. This portrait explains that she was a fertile tree, that the foliage to the left of Elizabeth and was full of paired fruit, symbols of fertility. But Elizabeth eventually chose a different course. She never married, and the Tudor dynasty died with her. The end of the Tudor story and the end of Henry's women. <laughs>